Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. That's why you tune in, isn't it? Because you already know that. Today I'm joined by Mickey from Essex. How are you doing, Mickey? Yeah, fine, thanks. What's been happening down there in Essex? The same shit as this happening all over around the world at the moment. <laughs> um, you know, business is closed, bits and pieces, you know, it's not good. It's not good, is it, at, at the present moment? You know, with everything shut down. Well, most majority of places shut down. Um, you know, just got to get around it and get and, and get yourself together and uh, keep yeah. yourself busy, get yourself through it. And next week, I think Wednesday, everything's back 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 on opening, which is good. You know, people can get out and about and do their things. You know, but listen. Last time there was a lockdown, there was a proper lockdown. There was no cars on the road. There's more cars now than, than the before the lockdown, you know? So I think people are ignoring the, call it seriousness behind it. Um, they, 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 I think the lockdown last time crippled people in a sense of, you know, money-wise. Um, and they thought, you know what, well, just get on with it. And we need to make money for a family. And that's what people are doing. Hence, the, that's where the cars are out there. You know, they must be rushing around working. Well, I don't blame them, you know. But listen, it is what it is. Uh, the reality of it all will come out one day. Um, you know, I've heard up, up, up north, not in London, but up north in Liverpool, they're scanning uh, parents' head, retinas, and telling the kids going to have a, a chip put in just underneath the, the skin of their hand. And if they've got coronavirus, they will be isolated from the parents, taken away into a unit, which I can't see happening. But anyway... That's the world, that's that's what's happening at the moment, which I was quite shocked of that. Um, being a parent, a parent, would you uh, allow your kid to be taken away into isolation? No, you wouldn't. Oh. It would cause an uproar, uh, an uproar, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Uh, Listen, well, they, can't, they can't take my dogs, forget kids. <laughs> all right then, Mick. Well, moving on from coronavirus, uh, we'll talk about some boxing at the moment. It looks like... Joshua Pulev's going to go ahead with 1,000 fans in the arena. What do you think to that? I don't think this government can make their mind up on, on, on what's going on in the world. You know, there's rules for one and not for the other, which um, which I think is wrong. Um, if there's coronavirus and it's a serious thing, government wouldn't allow anything, would they? So that tells you what's what's happening. You know, if they can allow 1,000 fans, well, what's, what's with the lockdown at the end of the day? You know? I don't think it's right if they're going to do that. It's like uh, certain professional sports people can get, can carry on what they're doing, you know? They're still bunching together. And listen, forget all that, what's going on at the moment. What about the kids are at school, yeah? yeah. Kids go, come from different families, mixed together, and then they, they go spread back out home, yeah? So they're mixing, all, if there's a virus, in the school, and then they're taking it home to the parents. So that tells you exactly about the government and what's going on. Why would you allow kids? I know there's education, they're growing up, they need to, they need to study that, but they are the ones that are vulnerable to bringing the disease of the virus back home to, 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 to families that don't have it, I believe. Um, so, you know, if the government's doing a lockdown, it should be a lockdown for everybody, you know? And like, I know in Cyprus they're doing a lockdown. You ain't allowed on the street from uh, eight o'clock in the evening till 5 a.m. in the morning. There's police out, there's army people out. In Spain, the same, you know. Um, if you're seen on the road, you know, you're heavily fined and, and, and endorsed about it. So we don't do it in this country. So with all these stupid other things that are coming out, we've like, you know, you can go to school, but everyone's on a lockdown. But that's where the, 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 if every member of kids goes to school and mix together, it's, it's going to create more viruses spreading easiest way to spread it so for them to let the kids back to me there's no such thing as a virus what they're talking about i think it's just a, a built-up thing uh worldwide to control us at the end of the day to get this chip it's all about chipping the human race to control and to make it a better environment a cleaner environment no more violence no more uh whatever's going on in the world robberies whatever because you're chipped up you can't go anywhere you know as soon as you're born bang you're gonna have a chip in you and what, what is the world coming to? There's no freedom anymore. There's no human rights anymore, I believe. Um, but I think all the, all the public and uh, the whole world should stand up against all this because who wants to be chipped up? But if you can't chip, get chip, if you don't want to be chipped, you can't travel. 
So they're putting us all in limbo mode. So they're taking away that human rights that we should have, you know. Uh, my dog Rocky's chipped. <laughs> Sorry? John my likes dog chips. Rocky is chipped. Oh. oh, yeah. I thought you said John likes chips. Sorry. <laughs> no. No, Rocky. Uh, what I was going to say before you went back onto the Corona thing, Eddie earns 1,000 tickets. The word is it could be two grand a ticket. So that's two million pound in pot, isn't it? Now, I know it's business and that, and we've got to get some money in, but this is how I look at it. And this is only going on what I've heard through the grapevine. And I always give Eddie Ernst it, because we all know he's greedy, but he just says, I'll have a pair now. Well, everybody in the world loves a pound now, not just you, Eddie, but you're greedy. But I'm not going to blame Eddie, because after the conversation I had last night with somebody who was at Sky, it's not Eddie Earn that's pushing the, the, the price, you know, with Pool left Joshua. It should have been 20 quid, but Joshua were balking at the idea of not having the gate. And Eddie Earn and Sky and them were like, they're torn, aren't they, between keeping Joshua happy and getting a few quid. And so Eddie Earn and Sky are not to blame. It's Anthony Joshua's team. They're the ones that have pushed it. Eddie Earn's just the front man and Adam Smith, aren't they? So Adam Smith and Eddie Earn, I apologise to you. Uh, I know you're going to cop it off the fans, but we know that you're not at fault. It's Anthony Joshua that's at fault. Now, he's Mary Poppins. He's away from it all. He doesn't have to speak about these price increases, does he? They're protecting his image because he's the cash cow. They're now the bad guys, but really, they're not the bad guys. They're just a number. They're just wheels in the cog. It's big dos of Femi that's behind the price. Um, so, technically, I want to know what you think about the pay-per-view, what you think about these tickets being extortionate and, and going to be the chosen few. Um, are they going to give anything to, to the NHS like they said they would? So, there's three <coughs> questions there, Mick. First of all, the pay-per-view, is it worth 25 quid? Well, you got to go on the last paper. Well, you know, Eddie, that's it, Eddie's prices, you know, um, since they went over to Saudi um, and Auntie Louise and, and, and Joshua, um, the money went up since that day, didn't it? Because they think they're in a, uh, an expensive area. Um, oh, they said being, it were a one-off. Yeah, exactly. They said it was a one-off and look, it's back to, to 24.95 where it is, yeah? So, um, it, what do I say about it? Is it extortion for the... Listen, he's got he's got people in his pocket right now because it's a lockdown, yeah? So people, they're going to watch it, aren't they? Uh, unless they wait for the following day to watch it on YouTube, it's free, isn't it? Yeah. So, but people would also want to watch it live and, 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 and on the night. So, like you say, number one, you know, I don't think a thousand people should be allowed in, in the auditorium um, because of what's going on now. So that, that, that sets that back. Number two, okay, we're talking about pay-per-view and, uh, you know, pay-per-view, I, I suppose more now, now so today rather than before with the lockdown, I suppose he's got to get his money somewhere. So he's got to put the price or, or slightly rise it. I don't think it's got anything to do with Joshua because although he's his manager, um, if Eddie says to watch Joshua, we're only going to get like 19.95 for this. Joshua's got a crooked isn't he? he there's no way out for him. He has to fight or vacate the belt. So, you know, he'd have to fight. So either way, it's Eddie's doing. Um, and because of the, of the pandemic, pandemic and way the country is at the moment, putting an extra five on, I think it's uh, personally, I think it's okay. Well, it but a lot of people probably go against it. it. Sorry? It would be to somebody like you, wouldn't it? Driving around in the brand new Bentleys. The five yeah. quid's a lot of money to some families, isn't it, in the pandemic? No, I just said that. You know, it may affect other families. But uh, listen, simple. Don't watch it. Watch it the next day on YouTube. I, sh I should have said that, should I, Eddie? <laughs> no. uh, what do you think about the extortion at prices being banded about for the chosen select 1,000 people who can go to the... Well, that's another thing. You can, it's only allowed 1,000 people, which is, is unfair, like you say, because Pittsburgh, there's, a lot of, there's probably a great deal of fans want to go and see that fight. Um, my money's on uh, Puliab anyway. Um, so, 
Um, I think it's wrong, even allowing a thousand fans in, in the pandemic we are, you know. But listen, we, we, we don't make the rules up, do we? So mm. it's, it's the government that makes the rules up. So it is what it is and it will be what it is going to be. Um, so it will be chosen people, I suppose. Um, because he's got a lot of friends, probably, and he, uh, Eddie and, 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 and friends of friends and this and that. And so they, they get selected tickets to selected people. So it's just the way it's going to be, unfortunately. Yeah. Ride the yeah. storm. <laughs> and what about the NHS? Eddie said he was going to look after the NHS first time they were allowed fans in. Why can't he give them 1,000 tickets to the NHS instead of charging two grand a pop and pulling two million in? That's a good point. That's a nice point. That's a very nice point. Why put the gate up a fiver? Because this is not a 25 quid fight, it's a 25. Now, so if they're charging that, why to make up for the gate? Well, if now they're being told they can have a gate or a small gate, why not give them thousand tickets to the NHS and take nothing out of it and show how grateful you are? Because he said that in March, didn't he? I think this is like, it's like applying for planning permission. You've got to do this and you've got to do that till you get it. And then you don't get them things, do you? It's the same thing. You know, he's used the NHS to gain what he wanted and he's got it, you know. Um, using the word NHS, I suppose, got him in. But then people would criticise what I said, wouldn't they? You know, there's always people to criticise, you know, well, I said it, I used the word NHS. Well, it still stands, you know. And we will contribute, you know, and it is for the NHS. But um, there's, uh, there's, 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 there's so many different points of views out there, you know, but my, my point of view is you're either going to do a lockdown or you're not going to do a lockdown. Why allow a thousand people to a boxing arena and you don't do it to other things, you know, um, even like a thousand people to go and football match, you know, why have they done that, you know? Yeah. And yeah. them stadiums hold fucking millions, don't they? Yeah, what do you feel? What do you think about Joyce Dubois non pay per view and Joshua Pooler, who was 40 after Christmas, Pooler 25 quid? Do you feel that BT are running rings around Matchroom and Sky? We're the prices, not we're not charging, they're giving good value, aren't they? Um, I think BT, like I said on the last uh, interview, with you, I think BT, um. They've specifically done that with um, uh, Joyce and the other fella um, because they, they thought they had Tyson Fury fight coming up. So people ain't going to fork out two lots of money, are they? Their main cash in the bag was Tyson Fury fighting, I believe. Um, so that's why, but unfortunately, he's not fighting now till next year. So although he wanted the fight, I don't know what happened there, but uh, I think because they knew they were going to start sanction two fights, um, before Christmas, um, they did want to bang them both out at pay per views, which they could have because, yeah. you know, I'm looking forward to the fight with Joyce and 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 um, Triple G, Dubois, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, whatever. No, uh, what did they call him? Um, Dan Triple D. Triple D. Sorry, Triple D. Yeah. yeah. You're thinking of Colossus. Dynamite. Daniel York. Dynamite. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've got to confuse them. You're not much drunk, are you, mate? Not yet, lad, no. You might be if John Fury gets hold of you. <laughs> Maybe. 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 Maybe, baby. Maybe. If you fight, that is. Uh, all right, then, moving on. Fury Joshua. Does it happen next year, mate? Listen, he's, 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 he's got a big test coming up. So let's get all past right. the test for He's got a big test coming up, Joshua, with Kulev, you know? So, he needs to get past him, which, I, honestly, I think he's going to up, upset Joshua this, this year, you know? And if that happens, that fight ain't going to go ahead, will it? No, they'll have to have a rematch pull up for Joshua. So, it's always right, people saying, oh, he's going to be fighting, he's going to be the biggest fight in history and this and that. Hang on, you've got people to get through. You know, you could have said that last year about uh, Andy Louise, you know? Is who, who Joshua was going to fight after that. But look, Luis basically jumped in there and completely blew the mix up, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So that 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 could happen with Joshua um, 
in December. November, the end of November. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, so I, 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 I believe he could, he could upset it. And then what? He ain't be, he, they won't be fighting each other. Well, it's a mandatory fight. Jo Joshua against Pulas, a mandatory. But where I have a problem with it is this. Pulas pushing 40. Plus, why do you need a rematch clause if Pulas wins? When, you when they criticise Mick Hennessy for having a rematch clause with the Vladimir fight after Tyson beat him. So Eddie's doing it to protect his fight track and understand he's that. So can't be that he's confident. Joshua. Yeah. So he's protecting Joshua, basically, and his pocket as well. You know? Not just Joshua, he's protecting his pocket as well as a manager. Yeah. Uh, if you if you're going to walk through the, if he thinks you're going to walk through Pulev, what what what's the contract for the you know the, the second fight coming up for, you know, at the end of the day? So, no, they're not confident. If they never had it with Louis, Andy Louis, um, that would uh, that would be in a, uh, an awkward position there, wouldn't it? Josh would be down the bottom of the table somewhere. Yeah, yeah, he'd be down at the bottom of the ranking. He'd be an yeah. afterthought, wouldn't he? Yeah, so, you know, that's the way it is, isn't it? What did you think to Babic against Tom Little at the weekend, mate? Um, honestly, I thought Tom Little was going to do it. I mean, I, listen, Babic is, is a swinger, isn't he? You know, he, that's all he's doing, swinging. He's got no technician about him. What he's doing, obviously building him up with different pop fighters. I, I understand that. What's happened, mate? <laughs> Are you here? Bring me in a bit, so I'm filming, yeah? Sorry, go on, mate. Um, listen, he's got, what is it, 4-0? Or 4-5-0? Um, and, you know, if the journeymen's are going up against him at the moment, you know. Listen, he's a, he's a good stringer. Um, but how far can he go swinging? He, he just goes in rushing and swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging. So hopefully he knows again. But when he's when he's going to start hitting five or six rounds onwards, you know, where's his swinging going to get him? If you've got a boxer that can hold himself correctly, which Tom Little was doing at the beginning, you know, good stance, good movement on the legs, moving the right way, I thought, you know, he's really come on a lot, Tom, you know what I mean? He could, being losing all that weight, he could move, you know. He looked well as well. He's resilient better. He looked like a proper fighter and the way he was, his stances were. And I thought, I think Tom's going to do it. I honestly thought Tom, Tom Lip was going to do it. But uh, Babish just comes in swinging, 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 you know. If you can, like, for instance, how Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson used to be, yeah. And then there's only one person, the band of Hollyfield, thank about. Let me take him into the, the, the trenches, six rounds and on, on onwards, to see how good he is. And that's what he done. That's what beat him, you know. And the same with Babish. You need to, you know, hold yourself... More footwork, you know, let him keep swinging, 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 and then take over after, you know, six rounds onwards. Um, increase your power then and um, go for it. Because um, I believe he won't go more than six rounds without that, but you start burning out. I mean, I know Eddie said you go 12 rounds out, but he wouldn't, you know, not not like that. So he's lucky to get him out. I think it was on the fourth round, wasn't it? He, went, uh, he got Tom Nickel out. Um, so, and you could see him tiring a little bit, um, Babbage, so you get a bit more of a technician in there, which they don't want to give him at the moment. They want to build him up a bit. It's all about money, as we know. Um, and we'll, we'll see what it's all about. You know, he hasn't really fought anyone good. Um, you know, a high standard. But listen, seems seems like he's doing the right thing at the moment. You know, um, not putting him down. He seems like a, a, a decent guy. He wants to fight, and great. You know, keep going. He's yeah. exciting, I suppose. Looking at him because we're how he's just. A, Great swinger, isn't he? Personally, I think Babic um, is dog shit, right? But what next for Dom for Tom Little? What's next for Tom Little? Well, he's ten and nine. Yeah, um, Dubois. No, he's retired, mate. Who's who's retired? Tom Little retired the other day. Did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought no. he knew. No, I didn't know that, sorry. Um, He's already fought at Dubois as well, mate. Oh, did he? Yeah, he fought. He's already fought at Dubois, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Quite a few uh, 
a few years ago. Do you feel that Tom Little's been put in hard fights? David Price, Daniel Dubois, Magadoff. Do you feel he's been put in uh, Magadoff, or whatever his name is called? He fought him in Saudi. Do I mean, I don't, what was his record? How many fights has Tom Little had? Nine, nine, nine and ten. Nineteen, he's had. Nineteen. Well, that ain't a bad number, is it? So, um, yeah, I suppose he's had he's had tough fights getting up there, but. Yeah, he's been put into trenches, I think, um, when he should have been there, yeah, just treading along uh, like most of them are, you know, building them up, building numbers up, get, gain a bit more experience. But to me, he looks like he could fight anyway. He, the way he carries himself, the way he, he holds himself, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing, you know. Do you Great start on him. Do you feel, Mick, that... Tom Little and Dave Allen, I put them both in the same bracket. They've both not won a belt, they're both young lads and they're both retired. Do you feel that they are now the poster boys for how not to pro to have your career progress? Has he fought Tom Little? Dave Allen? No, Dave Allen and Tom Little have not fought, but they're both retired now. Dave's yeah. last fight was when he was 27 years old. Tom's just fought. He's, he's had 19 fights. They've had 20, 25 fights. Do you feel that their careers, with them both not winning any belts and taking good items off and being overmatched, do you feel that they're the poster boys for how not to progress in boxing? I suppose you could look at it that way. Yeah, one way. Yeah. Um, listen, do you, do at the end of the day... Do you also feel that they were used by Eddie Hearn and, and just basically just thrown under the bus? Oh, listen, I mean, to make up an undercard from a good fight, you know, that that, that that's basically what's been happening, isn't it? They, they, they're putting on the undercard um, and, you know, promoters make money out of that. This is the, way, this, 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 the game, it's the boxing game. You know, you want to become a boxer, you get, you're sometimes going to get thrown in the deep end or someone's going to get in the ring, you know, even sparring that you don't know and it's said, I'll move around with you. So come on in. And then, you know, fuck, he's dynamite like he is, you know. You, you just don't know in this game. So the whole idea of the word boxing is, it, it, it goes with the territory, doesn't it? Whoever's going to jump in. You could be in any gym in the world and, you know, you're, you're moving around and some guy's there and he fancies a bit and he, he, he says, can I get in? down to the trainers the trainers might say yeah go on in and he might be uh, another Mike Tyson you know what I mean Who might so, be another Mike Tyson I'm just saying if you if, you know you're talking about boxing in general you know you don't know you don't know sometimes who's going to get in the ring with you how how good they are until you're in there with them and how good you are to deal with it you know what I'm saying is if, fight, if fighters are, are training in certain gyms and there's another uh, a nobody in the gym and he fancies it, he might say to the trainer, do you mind me jumping in? And he might be a dynamite kid like Mike Tyson used to be. So, what are you going to say? No. You say, yeah, get in if you want to get in, you know. It's, it's good for the fighters sometimes. So, it's all about um, getting in and experiencing from all these people, you know, whoever they are. Yeah. I just feel that, uh, I feel a little bit sorry for Dave Allen and Tom Little because I think they've had the brain scramble when they could have been protected. Well, you can look at that side of things, but listen, they're in the game. Let me just let me just touch on this, right? Let me just touch on this. Dave Allen fought Luis Ortiz, right? In his 11th or 10th fight. Something around about that. Anthony Joshua were fighting Jason Gavin at that time, but he's an Olympic gold medalist in his 11th fight. Look who Dave Allen fought in his 11th fight. Will it... Yeah. Will it... Will it uh, Dylan White and then and then Ortiz, 11th and 12, 11th or 12 fight, something like that. Joshua will fight in Jason Gavin and and pick people like that. Do you know what I mean? Anthony Joshua's 11th fight. I'm going to read it out to you now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Jason Gavin, 11. Rafael Zomb Zombano, 12. So they, so Dave Allen went Dylan White and then Lewis Ortiz. Now when Eddie Hearn had Lewis Ortiz, he wouldn't put Joshua anywhere near Lewis Ortiz. 
But it's okay to throw a lad from Doncaster in there, Dave Allen, for 12 grand. 12 grand. I know you're saying, I know you're saying, hey, it's a bit harsh, yeah. And he was the uh, WBA interim champion at the time, Louis Ortiz, and Eddie Hearn bought, bought uh, so he signed him as a blocker. He never, at one stage, tried to upgrade him to regular champion. Yeah. He did Scott Quigg because he bought him as a blocker to protect Joshua so that if yeah. he stayed with Golden Boy, Louis Ortiz, Hopkins and De La Hoya have been screaming for a Joshua fight to get the money. Eddie signed him, promised him all sorts and parked him up. He used yeah. him as a blocker. That's, what, that's why he did. And like I said, they fed Dave Allen to him, didn't he? And yeah. I don't agree with stuff like that. I feel for Dave, yeah. but this is it's Dave's own doing, isn't it? He thought there was short, a shortcut to success. He's out at game at 27 with his brain scrambled and his head done in. Never won a belt. So do, do we blame Matchroom? Or do we blame mm. Dave Allen? Or do we blame Sky? Who's at fault for that kid getting his brain scrambled? Because he's talking like Scooby-Doo at the moment. He's like that. Oh, like fucking Riddick Bow. Who, hey, Davies? I've never heard him talk lately. Right. He's talking yeah, like I mean... from Cornwall. I think I think Dave Dave in his earlier fights was 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 doing a lot better than he is he was in the later fights. You understand what I'm saying? He, he performed better, yeah. and I was watching a few of his fights, and I think he was he was good at up and coming heavyweight at the time. You know, this new white hope, the white rhino. You know, I, was, I, th I think I think he was. Saying, You're talking about like Jerry Cooney. I don't know. You know, he just um, he, he was doing. He fought a lot better in the earlier days than he did the later dates. Yeah, well, when he left Dennis Hobson, he was 6 and 0 on a draw. Now, like I said, and I've covered it many times, my argument with Dave Allen is this and Tom Little, they're saying they're training and this and that, and then they're coming out retired saying they didn't take it serious and, and they didn't train. Now, I personally think that's a, an insult to fans. That's what I think, even though they're likable kids and they've not done themselves justice. And I feel that in years to come, They'll regret not taking it serious and not training. That's what yeah. I think. What do you think, mate? Yeah, good point. Yeah. So, all right then, moving on. Women's boxing. Where is it, Eddie? Make and do you like it? Yeah, I think you asked me that question last time we spoke. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Uh, where, where is it heading? I think it's... it's uh, is creating a lot of interest for the uh, up and coming young ladies uh, to get in the ring and do a different sport rather than the, the general sports they normally do. Um, I think it's good. Um, you know, um, I enjoy watching it and uh, especially the last outing with, um, was it Savannah? That uh, Pete Savannah Fury against said, Anna Rankin. She knocked her out. I said it before, I'll say it again. She's amazing. She's, I've never seen a girl perform like that before. I was quite shocked. Great, well, great on like that team. Off. They're doing a great uh, job on her. Well done, done Peter. Yeah. Amazing. It's done brilliant. Uh, have you been getting any threatening phone calls, Mick, or any anybody ringing you up or stuff like that? Yeah. I you know, I know standard. You we, we, we call that standard, you know. They've got fuck what it's better to do. Um, um, yeah. I'm getting a lot of that lately, the last week or so. Um, you know, I spoke to Tim, Tim Alcott rang me the other day and started telling me about what you're sending me videos for. I said, do you know what, Tim? I do apologise. I don't always send you uh, any, anything I do on a cast and everything. And he started to run in the maybe. And he says, well, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? I said, what do you mean what I think I'm doing? I said, last time I spoke to you, you didn't want to know. This conversation never started because obviously I'm trying to get the fight on. Maybe Tim can help out. He said, please, this conversation never happened. Like, shit himself. I said, yeah, no problem, Tim. No problem, Tim. Tim rings me the other day, start giving it a fucking large one, you know? I said, well, I mean, you didn't want to get involved in this, this, this scenario last time with me and John Fury. I said, well, why are you talking to me like that for? I said, who are you to talk to me like that? I said, you know what? Fuck off. I said, to put the phone down, yeah? One minute he's saying hush hush this conversation about it, and now he's standing me trying to tell me, you know, stop making videos about John Fury. Yeah. Next thing I get phone calls, four or five phone calls that night. Obviously through Tim, who else is going to go? He's got my number, so he's probably rang a few people around, 
put it on him, put pressure on me. There's no fucking pressure at all on me. I just go, fuck, he did block, fuck off. Well, I, don't want him to, I won't waste my breath on these people, yeah? Shit people, that's what they are, yeah? You can't match me, yeah? And the big man behind you, come and fucking see me. Don't be a fucking pussy. Make your little calls to this one or that one, if it's you, John, yeah? Come and see me, mate. I'll tell you the best thing. Go on the internet and say, Mickey Fear, I do not want to fight you. End of story. This is not a grudge. This is a challenge. Be a man, lift yourself up and accept the challenge or say, Mickey Fear, I don't want to fight you. Simple. I've said it before. I'm saying it again, John. You're out there, you're hiding. You don't want to fight me, say, I do not want to fight Mickey Fear. End of. I'll wipe my hands with you, mate. Yeah? Remember, you're the one with all the mouth. You're the one with all the challenging, yeah? I'm here, mate, and I want that fight on, okay? Until you get up and stand up and say, I do not want to fight, I'm after you, mate. I will be making videos, yeah? You get anyone to fucking ring up. Not just me. Porky's getting a lot of it, mate, yeah? You're getting people ringing up, threatening Por Porky, yeah? Your little runaround, your little joeys. Is that what you can do, yeah? You think that's the right way? You're a pussy, mate, yeah? And all your people ringing up. Every day, mate. I get him every day on that phone. There, just fuck there. them off. You know what I mean? Well, it's got well, nothing. Well. Listen, listen. At the end of the day, it's got nothing to do with the outside world, people. Yeah, it's simply you're a man. I'm a man. Pulky, I want to challenge you. You say yes, Mick. I'll take it on. Or no, Mick. I don't. You're a proper man. Yeah. Not fucking. I'll tear your limbs. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'm like every fucking <laughs> fresh world. I'll, this, I'll that, tear that. your limbs from when? Exactly, you know, we don't talk like that. It's simple. You said you're the best, get out and prove it. I'm here. You're a big man, mate. A lot bigger than me. But I know what I'm going to do to you. So just t t turn up. You know what I mean? That's all I say to you. Um, get the fight on. Come on, pull your channel. Let's have a talk. Let's have a laugh. Let's move forward on this. Yeah, or not. Get up. Instead of your threats, or who you people are getting people to threaten people, I don't give a fuck about threats. I mean, threat all, all, all your life, mate. I've just fucked you lot off, mate, yeah? You shit to me, yeah? Simple. Be a man, stand up and say, we got to, say you don't want to fight me. I'm done, mate. I'm just challenging you. I don't have a problem with you. I don't have grief with you, yeah? I'm on the internet talking, that's all it is. Trying to get challenge your fight, what you want. You're the best. Come and prove it, mate. Yeah, there's millions of people out there your age better than you, and I'm one of them, like I said. Yeah? Prove me wrong. Simple. Let's do it. Oh. I can't be any fairer. I can't be any straighter. Yeah? If you challenge me, I'd say to you, John, you're too big for me, mate. You're a fucking big bear. Don't want it. But listen, I seen your video on my own with my two dogs. And I thought, hmm, what's he talking about? I know I'm better and fitter. Yeah? And I'll prove it to you. Just come out, mate. We'll do it. Do it properly like we're going to do it properly. Like this last video uh, Spencer Brown said, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do this, you know, we'll do it properly. Yeah? Pandemic, this pandemic, that. Fuck the pandemic, mate. I'm not saying it the wrong way for the NHS, so I respect them and I love them for doing what they're doing. Yeah? But we can get it in a, in a private location, get it all done properly, and we'll have a date soon and move forward. But prior to all this, stop threatening Porky. Yeah, he's getting most of the stick. You can do what you want to me by phone I calls, mate. <laughs> we both can handle it. So we've got two dog handers here. So, you know, what? <laughs> don't pussy yourself off, mate. You make yourself look, look, look little. You know, stand up like a proud man, yeah? Mm -hmm. Not an arsehole fucking get, get, get Please ring these people. Tell them fuck off dominal all videos. You know, all these bollocks. It's simple. It's just a challenge. Yeah, no grief, no problems, yeah. But the way you're going on, mate, you're trying to turn it into something else, yeah. Like I said. What do you think, Mick, about John Fury's bet with Davy Day, where he bet, he, he bet two million against Davy Day's one million? What do you want? David didn't put a million pounds on it, did he? David never opened his mouth about money. David's not a gambler. Yeah. Um, what do I think about John Fury? Listen, every, anyone can throw figures up, yeah? I had one of John's mates ring me up the other day. In fact, I took one of the calls, yeah? And I said, yes, Mickey Fury, are you ringing my phone, yeah? So he said, uh, 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 so I said, well, uh, excuse me, talk to me. He says it to me, 
uh, you're going to fight John then? I said, yeah, I'm going to fucking fight John. I wouldn't challenge me if I didn't want to fight him. What, you think you're going to beat him? I said, listen, my friend, if I didn't think I could beat him, I wouldn't challenge him, yeah? What's your problem? I said to him, what do you want to say to me? Uh, I wonder, would you take a side bet? I said, what do you mean side bet? He said, you know, for the fight. I said, well, what's your bet? He said, 10, 15 grand. I said, you got it, mate. I'll take, I'll take the bet. What, you honestly think you're going to beat him? I was saying about it. Who else in the world has challenged this guy? Hey, I've challenged him because I know what I can do. Yeah. That is it. Say no more. Keep my number. you got my number. When the fight's due, let me know and I'll take your money. And your name, the name you give me, just to let you know, is not your real name. I found out who you are through your voice. They know exactly who you are and you're from Burnley. I forgot the other surname you're using, but I know a thing about you anyway. So people want to make phone calls and I'll get to know them and I'll get that voice and I'll send it to some other people. They, everyone knows everyone in this world. So you, you look, ain't going nowhere just make, bringing up making friends phone calls. But this gentleman didn't. He was a gentleman. He spoke to me with respect and I respect people who respect other people, you know? If you do fight John next year, mate, would you have it BKB style, bare knuckle with unwraps on? Or would you want it in Queensby rules? Or would you prefer it with, you know, with 12, 10 or 12 ounce gloves on in ring, getting at it? Well, you know, the, the challenge was in a, in, in a arena, um, in a, sorry, in a boxing ring, yeah? Yeah. Queensbury rules. That was the challenge, you know? And I'll, I'll live up to the challenge because that's what I proposed, yeah? yeah? In a boxing match, yeah? With a ref and judges proper. Yeah? yeah. Um, you did mention that to me before in the arena with, uh, um, what, them BBK, but I don't care. BKB. Yeah, as, long as, as long as it's in arena, yeah? In arena with judges, properly judged, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's me. It's just a fight, isn't it? I can't understand why John hasn't come out and said, yeah, we'll do it in New Year. And he's gone <laughs> quiet on it. And it's quite disappointing, actually, after everything that's gone Listen, on. I told, I, told, I told you and I told the whole world who's listened to the, the last shout out, John's pulling wool over people's eyes because he had some seminars booked and he had to make himself look good. Yeah. See you Sunday. And then when people ask questions, what happened with Mickey Fio? Well, I fired him down, he didn't come. I only do what I can do. And that's, you know, that's how it was, you know. But going back to the original um, call out, well, sure, not call out, it was a challenge really, because he was saying he's the best. He believes he's the best. You can believe in being the best, but proving you're the best is another thing, you know. So be a man, step up to it. If you want to fight me, I'm here. If you don't want to fight me, I respect your wishes. Yeah. That's what I can say to you. Yeah. There's no grudge. It's just a challenge, a man-to-man -man challenge, because yeah. you've been offering so many people out and you think you're the best. And I thought, hang about, I believe I'm better than you. Simple. Come out, John, and just say, Let me, I don't want to fight you. That's it. Fine. Take my health to you, mate. And I'll respect your wishes. Yeah. Can't do any more, can I, Paul? No, you can't do any more at all, mate. It's, uh... I've tried. And I'm going to keep trying till you come out and tell me what you want to do. It's not so, looking good, mate, is it, for a fight to happen? Or as we say in South Yorkshire, bird's nest soup. It's, uh, <laughs> never heard that one. You've never heard that one, bird's nest soup. Yeah. No. It's, uh, when you get sent down around here in prison and, you, and, you, and your barrister says to you, it's looking like you're going to get some today. <laughs> yeah. You start there, you're thinking bird's nest soup, but it's not champagne and chocolate and caviar, is it? <laughs> no, I never heard that saying. Bird's yeah. nest soup, you know, yeah, it's an old Doncaster saying, mate. Okay. I mean, it means you're in the soup, and the only thing worse than soup is bird's nest soup. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it'll happen, but I want it to happen because there's been a lot of talk from both of you, and it's got to happen, but you're still sticking up for the fight. John's gone quiet, hasn't he? He's nipped it in, but in the board, a bit like they nipped. They've nipped other where'd, things. Where'd you get that one from? Where'd you get that one from? Nipped it in the bud, lad. That's that's down well, south, isn't it? Well, what he's done, he, he's nipped it in bud. He's invited you up to Manchester at very short notice to fight on his terms in his mate's gym or whatever, or his gym. He's mm. nipped it in bud because you can't just drop everything and go up next day, can you? 
Oh, like I said, you know, um, like I said before, um, even travellers, gypsies, I don't know what the main word to call them, um, they don't go to the, the, the other man's territory or vice versa. They go in a neutral ground, don't they? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, 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 we'll we're meeting at service station on M6. <laughs> What's up with that? Listen, man? like I say, it's um, going back to what it should be. It should be in an arena, not an arena, in a boxing a mat, a boxing ring. Queensbury rules, done. Listen, if it's not in the arena, it's the back guard, it's this or that, it becomes personal, it becomes, you know, not right, is it? It becomes a grudge, basically. You want to take people in the back garden, yeah? This is, this is a, you know, if someone shouts out that I'm the best, I believe I'm the best 54 year old, he's 55 now, I think, and I'm 57 now, so I'm still two years ahead of him. If someone says that, they're telling the, they're telling the, the public they are, who they are, yeah, especially coming off of someone famous, the son. Big respect to Tyson Fury, he's a great guy. Um, and, uh, you know, show show the world and your fans, because you got, you got the fans, you've got the people on your side, that what you really are. You know, there's a guy from South London want to challenge you from up north. Prove who you are. Prove, you know, it's no good saying something from your mouth and you ain't doing it, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you become, you become people call you names, you know, silly, silly little names. Uh, you get branded in that type of person. At the moment, you're branded anyway because you ain't coming out, you ain't saying nothing, you ain't being a man. Just get up and be a man and say the right things, John. Yeah. And it's all done. No one has to make any calls to anyone because this is not personal, number one. Don't make it personal, number two. And let's just move on, move on with our lives, you know? It'd be nice to fight you. So, sorry, nice of you accept my challenge, which you did originally. Just stand up, say you don't accept it anymore. Um, say what you want, you know? And I promise you, I won't say anything back. I'll, I'll be humble pie like I am. And done. And make life a bit easy, John. Just say what you want to say now. Even come on the channel, have a chat with Paul Kiss, have a laugh about it, you know. I don't hold no grudges, mate, you know. I'm a half decent guy, you know, and I suppose you you could be if you've done the right things, you know. So let's let's, let's do it. Come on the channel, let's have a talk about it. Let's see how we want to in fact, come on the channel, we'll talk about it, your views and my views, yeah? And see what we can do. If you don't I want to fight that's the best thing. You both you I respect both your wishes. You yeah. both come on here on Zoom, and you can That's both it. say your bit, and then and then either put your differences aside and go your separate ways, or get at it. That's, That's perfect, it. Hundred percent, hundred percent, perfect. So, John, come on, channel. Let's have a little chit chat and see what you're all about. See your views. See what's behind your mind. What, what how you're feeling, and and what's happened over the last six months. Let's get it out to the people because the people want to hear this, and move forward. Or you can say, Mickey, I don't want to fight you, mate. No disrespect. Thank you very much. And I'll say, you know what, John? Thank you very much for coming on Porky's channel and, and, and telling everyone how you are and how you feel about it. And I promise you, from my heart, you know, that is it, mate. Just get on and tell me what you want to do. You know? Simple. All right, then. What have we done? It's been a pleasure, mate. Vice versa. Thanks for coming on. Uh, just give me an update. So basically, you're more or less still looking for venues and look, waiting for the virus to go out, yeah? Um, I don't think the virus is going to be a problem because we'll, 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 we'll do it, um, a stream or something, you know, so um, it won't be a problem. Uh, the only problem with having a venue with people in the venue, you like, is maybe a problem. So simple, you know, they'll probably be free, free on each corner. And we do it like the proper lockdown, how they do it, you know. And we've been passed, we've spoken to like the, the local police about it back in May, 28th of May, heading for the 28th of May before, and it was okay with it. So, no problem. We can move forward on that. Apart from John moving forward and accepting what, what we're going to do, and we're going to fight together and, and, and be equal about it, basically, and fair. Well, that's all we want. We just want to see you two guys set all your differences like men. I'm here. There'll be a winner I'm, I'm, and there'll be a loser. But of course. Listen. It'll be a good night for the fans. Exactly. And you know what? 
like you say, it'd be a good night for the fans and just to get this um, part of our lives out of the way. But you're on my bucket list still, mate. So let me know what you want to do. Brilliant. Well, listen, mate, I'm going to get off. So thanks for coming on and uh, look after yourself. All right, take care. Wrap and you, up, mate. it's cold, mate. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to shit out now. So yeah, take care. You're All at right, work. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers, bye. Mate. Well, that was uh, Mickey Theo from Essex. He's still looking for the John Fury fight, which I think uh, is admiral because he just wants to fight, doesn't he? But uh, if you're watching, John, I'm just going to touch on something else. Get a hot flannel, John. What you do, you boil the kettle, put it in a cereal dish, put the flannel in, get it hot after five minutes, rinse the water off, put it on your face, get some shaving foam and a razor, and take that off, John. All right, take it off your face, because the Gary Glitter look, it's not a good look, John. And your phone's been red hot now for a few days. And people are basically laughing at you in boxing fraternity. They're not going to tell you to your face, John. But behind your back, they're laughing, mate. And like I've just said, it's not a good look. So whip it off. All right, and be a real man. All right, don't, don't be coming on TV with that on, John, because it's shocking. Just like the thumbnail that I'm going to put on this video now. All right, John, don't have nightmares. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. And most of all, let's get behind the Mickey Theo John Fury fight because it must happen. BKB, bare knuckle boxing, and Queensby rules. Oh, with 10 or 12 ounce gloves on. These men need to get at it as soon as this virus has gone. All right? Peace out.